Hutus are one of the ethnographic groups of Ukraine, which is distinguished by its extremely colorful clothing, its unique local dialect of the Ukrainian language, and folk customs, traditions, diverse folklore, and the development of folk handicrafts and architecture. Cattle breeding was a major occupation of the Hutsuls. They paid great attention to it and were engaged in it as long as they could remember. Unfortunately, the magical beauty of the mountains was not conducive to the development of agriculture. Therefore, over several hundreds of years, Hutsuls bred animals that gave them both food and clothing. The atmosphere of tranquility and harmony of the surrounding nature inspired the Carpathian people to create new handicrafts. Development of the folk crafts fostered not only the development of master's talents, but was also a basic necessity. Wood carvings, production of ceramics, the processing of leather and metal, embroidery and weaving – all these crafts allowed local inhabitants to exchange goods for grain and products which they lacked in the mountains. Weaving was one of the most popular forms of activity. A weaving loom stood in every house. Girls and boys learned to operate the machine from their childhood. There were sufficient raw materials in the mountains to make these handicrafts, and their quality was quite impressive. The development of sheep breeding fostered the production of wool clothing for household needs. Seeing as this craft was very popular, the competition was fierce because every family tried to produce the highest quality goods. It just so happened historically that local masters started to engage in weaving. It is an ancient craft that has been passed down through the generations. We weave lizhniki, these are soft woolen coverlets, and these hunya are the traditional outerwear of the hutsuls. The hunya were urgently necessary in severe mountains weather conditions. A special cut and wool protected people against the common cold, fever and enemies. Therefore, the Hutsuls considered that this mountain wear was endowed with supernatural properties. Hunya were widely used in wedding ceremonies. They were placed under the feet of the brides. Newborns were wrapped in them after baptism to protect them from the evil eye. Hunya is not only a dress, it is also a ritual talisman that is almost forgotten today. Prior to weaving, masters needed to make threads of sheep wool. Wool was put into a barrel, poured with boiling water and washed. Then it was washed in clean river water and dried under the sun. We put the cleansed fleece, which is washed before, on a harrow scoring machine and calm it. Comb fleece then turns into a flex toe. It takes about 30 minutes to come out 1 kg of wool. Needless to say, this is extremely hard work. The Highlanders were not afraid of physical work, but at the same time they used mechanical instruments with great pleasure in order to save time in this production process. After that we spin thin threads and thicker threads. It is possible that children's hands do not move smoothly, but for most kids, this is just the start of a long way to mastering this craft. 
Thin threads are used to make the warp and thick ones are used to make cloth. When I finish spinning the wool, I take it off the spindle. After that, I pull hushka on a hand. And use it to weave a cloth. This special tool is called a warper. We use it to measure how many threads we need to make a coverlet or a hunya. We must watch over this process in order that the thread lies flat and not jump from one division to another. After that, we take the warp off, like this, and then we make such a braid, so that the threads do not get snarled together. After that, we cut it into two equal parts, and then we put it on a weaving loom. When a master wanted to paint a thread, he needed to fold it in a particular way. It was a simple process. Threads were twirled on a stick with a bifurcation. Folded wool was put into water with dissolved paint and was boiled for a certain amount of time. Today the process looks like it did a hundred years ago, except that now we use a more modern vat to paint the threads. Already in the 19th century, Hutzul masters widely used the thread coloring technology. The dyes were natural and chemical. Dyed threads were hung in the open air in order for them to dry. It is difficult to imagine how many hands touched this machine over such a long period of time and how many coverless and hunia were woven. The weaving loom looks like an old instrument was used a hundred years ago. This loom was made of beech wood. Some were made of European spruce, which was stronger than beech. This is the warp. We reel it on the roller. These are thin threads of the warp. We also spin thicker threads, which are used to weave the fabric. The warp is on the top, and on the bottom of the cloth in the middle is weaved with thicker threads. Ось 
середині. От зверху йде основа і знизу основа. Ми вчимо посередині. Потім After that, we press on the pedal and shift the position of the work. І міняємо положення основи. Потім ударяємо лядою. Ось так. І поступово утворюється полотно, яке нам потрібно. In such a way, we get the cloth that we need. In this way, long fibers of wool with ends let out on the front side were inweaved after every three woven threads. Thin threads have to be from 30 to 40 centimeters long. Hence the name, shaggy or crocheted hunya. There are hunya of two kinds. The first ones are crocheted. They are large and woolly, with wool slivers. They are all proofed, which is why hunya are snow and rain resistant. Besides that, hunya are very heavy. Other hunya are standard. They are woven and combed out. They are much lighter and more convenient. It is finished cloth. It is woven. Now we will comb it out. In such a way, the thick and coarse fabric turns into a cloth that is smooth to the touch and soft. Woven, combed out fabric was put on a roller, which was specially placed on a river bank close to a small waterfall. If there was no waterfall, local inhabitants constructed a dam of wood and stones to create the effect of a waterfall. The construction looks like a well. The diameter of the upper part reaches about one and a half meters. The level of water in the river rises before the dam, and if it is necessary, the dam is opened and blankets, hunya and other works are thrown into a strong stream of water, which inundates them. Bumping into the rocks and other natural obstacles, the water forms a wide, foamy whirlpool in which the woven fabric becomes fluffy and soft. The process lasts about 30 minutes. If a hune is inside the shaft longer, it can become smaller and coarser. After that, the huni is pulled out of the shaft and is dried. Old Hutzels said that the hunya saved them on many occasions from wolf's fangs and enemy hatches. A wolf could not bite them because the long wool on a hunya obstructed them and the enemy could not injure them with a the hatchet because it got entangled in the slivers. Nowadays, Carpathian traditions are successfully integrated into the modern life of progressive fashionable women. A lot of projects are being introduced to promote ethnical Ukrainian traditions. They look amazing, making us think that all the best was invented before us. We need only preserve the legacy of our ancestors and believe in the magical power of the roots of the Ukrainian nation.